In this lecture today, we're going to introduce the concept of confidence interval. So if I ask you to find, for example, the population proportion or population mean, usually you just take a random sample and then you calculate and find the proportion of the sample or the mean of the sample. But that single value really captures the population parameter. So to make sure that we have a range of data that capture the actual population parameter, either proportion or mean, we are interested in forming a confidence interval. To construct a confidence interval for population proportion, we need some terminologies, some basic definitions. First of all, we're going to define the point estimate. What is the point estimate? If you have population proportion, which is denoted by P, the population proportion of successes, P, has a nice point estimate. The point estimate for P is given by the proportion of successes in a sample. It is denoted by p hat, which is equal to a fraction x divided by n. x is the number of successes in the sample, and n is the sample size. So you're going to find the number of yeses or the number of successes in the sample, put it on the numerator, and on the denominator, you have the sample size. The point estimate for population proportion of failures is denoted by q hat, which is equal to one minus p hat. So we define the point estimate for population proportion. Then an interval estimate is an interval or range of values used to estimate a population parameter. So we are interested in finding all possible values or range of values that estimate the population parameter, in this case, population proportion. So, so far we defined point estimate and also we defined interval estimate. We also need the level of confidence. The level of confidence, which is denoted by C, is the probability. So since it's a probability, we look at the area below the curve that the interval estimate contains the population parameter. Assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. Then we need to define the critical value. After you found the level of confidence or C, the meaning of that is that you have the area or probability, which is this blue shaded part portion below the graph. You're looking for critical value, Z sub C. To find a critical value for a confidence level, you're gonna use your calculator. So let me pull up my calculator and show you how to find the critical value. The level of confidence C is the area under the standard normal curve between critical values, negative ZC and positive ZC. If somebody asks you what is critical value, you're gonna say that, hey, critical values are values that separate sample statistics that are probable from sample statistics that are improbable or unusual. So these are the points that you're trying to find. Z sub C and negative Z sub C. Let me show you how to use your calculator to find different critical value for different C or level of confidence. So let me share the screen. First of all, you need to go to second, bars, and find inverse norm. So whenever you have the area and you're trying to find the Z values on the horizontal line, 
the function that you're going to use is inverse norm. Now that you are an inverse norm, you can enter different values for area. So if the question says, hey, the level of confidence is 90%, you're going to enter 0.90. Mean is zero. Standard deviation for standard normal distribution is always one. And you're going to make sure it is located at the center because the area is located at the center. Now go to paste, hit enter, enter again. And as you can see, the critical value on the left is negative. 1.6448 or negative 1.645. And on the right hand side, you have 1.6448 or 1.645. As you can see, these digits are the same. One of them is negative, the other one is positive. Now, what if you have a different level of confidence? So again, you go to second, bars, find inverse norm change this area, for example, to 95%. So 0.95. The mean for standard normal distribution is zero. Standard deviation for standard normal di distribution is one. And you make sure it is located at the center and hit paste. One more time. And as you can see, the critical value is now changed. The Z value is negative. 1.9599, and on the right-hand side, you have 1.9599, and so on. So if I give you a different confidence level, again, second bars, you'll find inverse norm. And here, if I ask you to find the 99% confidence interval, you're going to enter 0.99 mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and again, you hit center and hit enter twice. You get different critical values. And again, critical values are values that separate sample statistics that are probable from the ones that are unusual or improbable located in these smaller areas. So let us go back to our slide and continue. So again, as I showed you in calculator, if the level of confidence is given to you as 90%, the critical value is 1.645. If the level of confidence is 95%, the critical value is 1.96. If the critical value, if you're looking for the critical value for 99% level of confidence, it is 2.575. Students usually memorize these critical values for this famous popular level of confidence. So if you have a level of confidence, which is 90%, you quickly write ZC as 1.645, this number on the left, on the right. If the level of confidence is given to you as 95%, you memorize this, or you know how to use your calculator. It is 1.96. And if you have 99% level of confidence, the critical value is 2.575. I just showed you how to use your calculator. Let me pull up again the calculator and show you the calculations that they did here. So again, for 90%, the critical value is 1.6448. If you round it, you get exactly 1.645. If you have 95% level of confidence, the critical value is 1.9596. And then if you have 99% level of confidence, then the critical value is 2.575, 2.576. So you either memorize these numbers or you know how to use your calculator. Again, second, bars, and normal inverse norm that gives you these Z values on the horizontal line. The next item is margin of error. We introduced all of these terminologies and definitions. Why? Because we're going to calculate the margin of error and eventually form the confidence interval. If you have a level of confidence, see, 95%, 90%, 99%, and so on, the margin of error, which is denoted by E, 
sometimes it's also called the maximum error of estimate or error tolerance is defined as the greatest possible distance. So error, margin of error is the distance between the point estimate and the value of the parameter that is estimating. And why it is important for us? After calculating the margin of error, you can go to the next stop. You can basically find the lower bound and upper bound for the parameter that you are estimating. Since we are working with population parameter P, the lower bound is P hat minus margin of error and P hat plus margin of error on the right-hand side. How do you calculate the margin of error? Margin of error is ZC that you calculated in previous slide times the square root of P hat times Q hat divided by N. And finally, the probability that the confidence interval contains P or population proportion is C. C is 90%. 95%, 99%, and so on, depending on the question. Assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. So with these given information, let us take a look at one example. In this example, you have the following survey. In a survey of 1,000 US teams, 372 said that they own smartphones. Question says, hey, find a point estimate for the population proportion of all US teens who own a smartphone. So you have a very large population, everybody. How many US teens do you have? Are you going to ask everybody? Of course not. So we took a random sample of a thousand US teens and we asked them, hey, do you own a smartphone or not? 372 out of 1,000 US teens said yes. So that's how we find the sample proportion. N is equal to 1,000. We ask 1,000 people and 372 said yes. So this is the number of successes. Remember the formula for the sample proportion. It is equal to x divided by n. x is 372, and n is 1,000. So if you do the algebra, it is 0.372, and in percent, you get 37.2%. So out of this population, we took a random sample, and 37.2% said yes they own a smartphone. But the question is, does this one is the same as the population proportion? Is this a true proportion? Is this a true percentage? Of course, we are not sure about it. That's why we create and construct a confidence interval. So now question says, well, we know that that might not be the correct answer, or it might not capture the true population proportion, move on to the next stop and calculate 95% confidence interval. Well, there's that decision. We already know P hat is equal to 37.2%, which is the point estimate for the population proportion. We can easily find Q hat, which is one minus, 37.2%, which is 62.8%. Now, since n is equal to 1,000, if you do the multiplication between n and p hat, it is equal to 372. Some books use 5, some others use 10 for the minimum value to check for normality. But again, 372 is a large number. It is definitely more than 5 or 10. The next multiplication is 1,000 times Q hat, which is 628. This is, again, a large number. It meets the normality criteria. So now that we have all the information, 
they can find ZC. Well, we know that we have 95% confidence interval. We already know the critical value for 95% confidence level is 1.96. So you can construct and find the margin of error with formula ZC times square root of P hat, Q hat divided by N. ZC is 1.96 times square root of P hat, which is 0.372. Q hat is 0.628 divided by 1,000, which is approximately 3%. So 3% is the distance between the population proportion and the sample proportion. So now that we found E, or the margin of error, we can easily construct the left endpoint and right endpoint. Remember that the left endpoint is p hat minus the margin of error. p hat is the proportion for your sample, which is 37.2%. E or the margin of error is about 3%. And on the right hand side, you have p hat plus E, everybody which is 0.372 plus 0.03. So what's the meaning of that? It means that, hey, the population proportion of US teens who own a smartphone is bounded between 34.2% and 40.2%. This is the interval that captures all possible proportions. Well, you're gonna say that, hey, we are 95% confident that the population proportion of US teens who own smartphones is between 34.2% and 40.2%. Now let me show you how to use your calculator to calculate the interval for this example. So let me share the screen with you. In using your calculator, first you need to click on stat. So click on stat, and then you need to go to tests. So again, stat, use the arrow key to go to tests. And you need to find one proportion Z interval, one proportion Z interval is the answer. So what is X? X, the number of yeses, yes, we own smartphone was 372 and out of a thousand people. The confidence level is 95%, so 0.95 hit calculate and then boom you see the interval created for you on the left hand side you have point three forty two and take a look you have point three forty two on the right hand side you have point four oh two which is exactly the same as what you have on the right hand side so again you can easily use your calculator to double check your work Click on stat, use arrow key to go to tests, and you need to find not Z interval, everybody, not Z test. We are not looking at these. These are hypothesis testing. You need to find one proportion Z interval and enter X, the number of yes or successes, and N is a thousand, the sample size. Confidence level is 0.95. Students usually forget to put point and then do the calculation. And you get the exact same result as you do the algebra. 